dark, noisy hall of wardrobes with tellies for faces. It's a wonderful, wonderful place, isn't it? They are nostalgia grottos. Well, they are if you're in your 40s or 30s. But nostalgia will only extend so far for your arcades. You can only really be nostalgic for games that touched you in your childhood. Or you dirty beggar, I meant touched you in your special place. God, I mean your heart, you oaf. Not your dangler or your wang trap. No, no one was sexually abused by Mr. Do's wild ride. Although they might have been by a lusty super hang-on. Possibly, I don't know. This is going to be a list of games probably none of us played in their natural home. Their habitat, if you will, of the arcade. These are the games rarely seen by our fading eyes, trapped in a MAME folder on a PC hard drive, ready to be discovered. There's loads of them. This is the fifth of these such lists I've made. This one is going to be slightly different though, as I'm going to rank the list in terms of quality rather than how weird or offensive it is. But don't worry, there's still plenty of oddities ahead, so I'll stop gassing and start squeezing my putrid arcade slop right in your twin toppermost skull holes. Would you like that? I'll do that right now. Yeah. I can't give you a lot of information about Video Vince and the Game Factory, but what I can tell you is that you absolutely didn't play this on one of your seaside excursions as a young pup. This one you see was a prototype manufactured by Mile Star in 1984. Well, I say manufactured, clearly it wasn't manufactured, it was just sort of developed and left in a room. From what I can gather about the scant information to do with this game, Vincent here is an all-round handyman at a magical video game manufacturing plant and he's tasked with getting all the elements required for an arcade game. Maybe he's making a game that actually came out, eh? I can see why this game didn't get a release though. And not just because it has a rather tenuous link with the facts of early 80s game development. It is a collection of story-linked mini-games in the style of US arcade games of the early to mid-80s, like Journey and Mr. Flea, as Vince assembles the arcade games single-handedly. None of the games are conceptually very good, unfortunately, and the execution is equally as dismal. It's not great, and it's probably a good thing that Video Vince got laid off before he finished his task and sullied arcades with his handiwork. Avoid this one, but if it makes you feel better, Vincent, you've got big shoes, and we all know what that means. Your terrible game. That's what it means. Your game is terrible. This 1997 Unico Electronics Co. Maze Puzzler has you charging about, making a right nuisance of yourself, breaking boxes left in the street, and stealing the goods inside all while being pursued by the owners and the cops. Is that technically burglary though? Don't you have to be inside like a premises to burgle? Uninvited? Maybe the X part of the title is that they're no longer a burglar and now they just break coin safes that people have left lying about in the street. Using either a hammer if you've chosen the lady thief or your head if you've selected the middle-aged actor from one of those 450-odd low-budget Essex Boys movies, you'll protect yourself from the extended upper limb of the judiciary. 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 That's how you say it. Judiciary. You can also use bombs or tee <laughs> big guffs. <laughs> you did a bottom burp. Most of the five-stage game is this. A Rally X-style runabout. But variety is injected via boss stages, forced scrolling escape levels and some puzzle elements. But it's not particularly fun to play at any point during these stages. Plus, the pre-rendered graphics look absolutely charmless too. And if anything is going to push down my interest in a game, it's fake looking pre-rendered sprites. Burglar X, you can burglar her off.
This title translates as War Against the Emperor, which is far easier for me to say than mangling a Chinese pronunciation, perhaps upsetting most of China, including their leader, who does look like Winnie the Pooh now you come to mention it. Not much is known about War Against the Emperor beyond its very, very apparent loose moralistic stance as regards the appropriation of creative work of the likes of Capcom and SNK. Yes, those are King of the Fighters and Street Fighter 2 characters bootlegging each other in the chops like a fan-made remake Rujan title or something. It's estimated this was developed by a company called Genie and appeared in arcades in the year 2000 and is apparently running on Sega's System C2 which is structurally pretty much a Mega Drive. The rather anonymous nature of the developers along with China's scant respect of IP protection saw this pretty safe from litigation but one little play of it by the head honchos of SNK and Capcom man they would have seen it's really not worth bothering with. It is very much a terrible scrolling beat-em-up. It's got very limited moves, low interaction with the environments and unfair punishing enemy AI. This bootleg cabinet would probably much have been pushed out pretty swiftly as soon as the excitement of seeing Dalsim, Caillou, Chin and Ryu share screen time. Well, as soon as that's worn off. Despite on how exciting this looks, it really isn't. I really wouldn't bother. It's that Robert Cop 2 figure in arcade game form. This episode is going to be fairly nudity heavy, so fans of big haired early 90s exploited porn starlets disrobing are in for a right old treat. This time though, it's hairy otter's pockets and sweater meat by stealth, as the title screen gives no indication that you'll be seeing birth canals. Even when you start playing this 1995 Playmark Puzzler, your level of concentration on one side of the screen will completely see you oblivious to the fact there is a hairspray happy nudist descending down the other side. The game, should you be able to concentrate on the coloured orbs after you've seen uh, the ladies wab and yabs, has you grab your balls. Stop it! No! That's filthy! Uh, where was I? Yes, the balls fall down the screen like 95% of all puzzle games like this. But this time, once it's landed, you can still use your pointer and fire button to then grasp those spheres and move them around to do the usual match free and they disappear gameplay. And you have to do it with a joystick so it feels a bit weird. It will work a lot better with the mouse, obviously, but the way I've described it, do you really want to play it? It's like a less complex version of Columns or Tetris. It's just using boobies, yeah, to keep you playing it, even though it's not very good. Well, don't. Don't listen to them, OK? I mean, I will, because I'm a weird-looking, lonely pervert. But there's still hope for you. Touch grass, not digital ass. <laughs> ESD's 2000 game compilation is far more upfront with its sleaziness. The honesty is appreciated, ESD. Thanks. You choose your princess. Anyone know which country these ladies are the princesses of? I think there's a royal scandal a brewing. Um, then you choose one of the six games under the instruction of this waif like young lady who wants you to see underdressed woman folk. It's really kind of her, to be honest. There's a very poor Pac-Man derivative, a pretty dismal Pang-alike, a competent Mahjong, a decent Columns with spelling. Stop trying to make me learn stuff. Three-letter words, Christ. A short-timed Solitaire and a Tetris clone that shamelessly uses Beatles music. Once every two levels, regardless of the game, you will be presented with this roulette wheel. You will then choose the colour, and if the colour lands on the one you selected then you might get to see the camera pan down and show you the ladies bits how exciting lady bits Whew. 
this game, well, or compilation of games, is a bit of a sports sock sexual assaulters paradise, and it's really quite forgettable. It's a Kellogg's selection pack of games, only it's a selection pack made up of Corn Flakes, Bran Flakes, Rice Krispies, Cheerios, and the other cereals that taste like cardboard and that anyone with a functioning taste bud will likely dislike. Only the cornflakes chicken on the box has tits. Bland. The game, not tits. This IGR arcade game from 1983 is believed to be the only game made by the company. It is a single screen tale of a lusty sheik who must kidnap passing women and take them to his sex dungeon. Yes. I'm not really sympathising with the protagonist here. The young women are passing on camels and jeeps and the oil-enriched Arabian's task is to fill his harem with them by shooting their transport and then carrying them unconsciously to the base of the screen whilst avoiding monkeys, cars, snakes and angry servants who quite rightly think that the sheikh's behaviour is, you know, a bit off. I mean, it is a bit off. Definitely a product of a similar 80s mindset that gave us games like Custer's Revenge and Loverboy. Harem plays like a creepier, crappier, reverse rapey frogger. It's playable, but you'll need a shower after you've played it. Korean company Sun A released this Bubble Bobble clone in 1996 that tells the story of a baby whose toy room has been overrun by a demon. So he sends a heroic bubble blowing penguin to sort it out. I mean, what do you expect? The baby to sort it out? What's he going to do? Is a baby. A penguin is obviously the best equipped to deal with a supernatural invasion of a toy room. It's sort of priesty in its colour scheme after all. I'm not entirely sure how it blows bubbles, though. I mean, it hasn't got any lips. Has it got, like, some sort of special tool in its beak? Oh, and its other attack is that it farts. <laughs> it's farting its bottom burps, just like that other game from earlier. Oh, I do love a good gaff. It's non-spectacular, fairly polished, single-screen, anthropomorphic platforming fun, so it is. It's not a patch on the likes of Snow Brothers, Parasol Stars, or its clear inspiration, Bubble Bobble, but it's far from terrible. Also, and after a long run of sexy games, finally we get a nice, family-friendly tight... Oh. Oh, for Pengu's sake. Look at those inflamed areolas. MAME oddity regulars Galico have made their usual appearance, with the Spanish arcade coders this time taking a trip across the Strait of Gibraltar to Egypt with a violent adventure in ancient history. A pharaoh warrior must slay well-guarded Egyptian gods in order to save his snatched wife. I presume Big Karnak is the questing husbando, and presumably he goes to the pub with a smaller person called Little Karnak. Maybe they play darts together and they have the big and the little names to separate them. Little Karnak's not very good at darts. Big Karnak, though, the game is good. Vividly graphic Rastan saga meets goats and goblins stuff. It changes in structure a little bit from being a linear hack and slash affair in the first level to being a more maze-like puzzle type game inside the tomb of stage two. Karnak acquires a mystical staff at the beginning of stage two in order to combat the legions of goons and ghouls. And in a way it sort of plays a little bit like myth as well. It's quite a good mix of games, to be honest. It's a challenging quest, this. Maybe lacking a bit of the spit and polish that you might get in a Japanese release. But it's a fun time all the same. If you've got an Evercade, you'll likely find it on the second arcade collection pack. Isis can hardly recommend it as a fair enough title that I sphinx you should play. It's bizarre, but it deserts your attention yeah bad puns what are you gonna do though eh you sour puss
Dude, this game is rad. Look at this. This is possibly the most 1990s game I've seen in a while. It's full of moments like this too, this clever Taito fighter from 1992. The scrolling usually left to right in games of this ilk is this time transposed into traveling into the screen like a driving game. The sprite scaling from an 80s Sega thrill ride like Outrun or Thunderblade here is married to the brawling of a Double Dragon style beat-em-up. Look, you can punch cars, cars from the future. This is what we wanted our adult lives to be, punching future cars. It's an absolute blast to watch and play through a loud Michael Bay spectacle of a title, but in more ways than one. Like Michael Bay's titles, it's a bit shallow. There's not a lot going on. It's the set pieces you'll be looking out for that you'll keep playing to see. Shorn of the spectacular bang bang explosions and relentlessly swift backdrops, the gameplay of the beat em up itself is really, really quite bland. In a time of Streets of Rage 2, Turtles in Time and Final Fight, it's so light on moves and content. It's a pretty average beat em up to be honest. It's just that it looks so amazing. It's not rad but sad to see this, given the flash and variety of the settings and the original concept and the funny names of the lead characters too. I mean, Burn Bowie and Keith Jagger. I mean, you can see where they got those names from. Once you've played through it once, though, you'll not have to play it again. You'd have seen everything. Riding fight, then. Excellent the first time you play it, but after that you'll be hoverboard. Also released in 1992, Tad Corporation delivered this hidden gem, Heated Barrel. An exciting side-scrolling shoot-em-up with a choice of four western-themed characters. You'll move left to right, blasting your weaponry in all eight directions as you are set upon by a cavalcade of killer cowboys. The varmints will relentlessly attack you throughout and you'll do very well to survive this gunfight at the pain in the arse. Corral. It's a big, long, lengthy adventure, which whilst not particularly graphically impressive, is a responsive and pulsing shoot 'em up The name Heavy Barrel comes from your special attack, you see. You hit the barrel button and your character will hide, 10 gallon hat and all, in a wooden barrel, which acts as a temporary shield. If you want more barrels, well, they can be replenished by shooting barrels, because they contain barrels. That's weird, isn't it? It's a great little shoot 'em up this. Only the, the overly tough boss encounters and the dodgy Native American stereotypes can be considered major flaws with it. There's not a lot to it, maybe, but I had a great deal of fun with this. And you should too, Treacle. You can put Arsus chaps on, if you wish, while you play it, just for that full cowboy experience. That's entirely up to you. Just make sure they don't get WhatsApp to me. Thanks very much. I've seen enough nudity for one video, thanks. And that's a wrap. Please feel free to watch the other four in this series. And please, after you've watched them, recommend me some more main oddities for an episode six so I don't have to crawl through that main folder again. Thanks for allowing me to waste your time. Like, subscribe. Okay, thanks, bye.